Okay guys, uh, welcome back. Welcome back to Birmingham Fan TV. Um, I've actually got the privilege of having a guest on this week. Um, so I'm joined here by Jake Moore, uh, Reading fan. And uh, is a... Jake, do you want to just tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, well, what's there to know? Um, I've been a, a Reading fan for quite some time now. Uh, mostly go to away games, uh, obviously, when I'm not working it and whatnot. Um, but yeah, just following Reading up and down the country. Um, obviously, it's been quite up and down the last couple of years, obviously, getting to the playoffs and then last season finishing just above the, the drop zone. So um, it's been a bit of a roller coaster, like, like yourselves following Birmingham. Um, but no, yeah, just not much else to say, really. Just a Reading fan. Just your standard um, fan. Yeah, just standard football fan um, yeah. following his team. But no, yeah, a pleasure to be on the channel, mate. No, no worries. Um, no, honestly, thanks for, thanks for speaking to me. Um, so I want to talk a little bit first about Reading. Um, obviously, they went through an absolute heartache. We're going back uh, two seasons now, aren't we? Um, just over a year ago, losing to Huddersfield in that playoff final, um, and then you went into a bit of a spiral last season. Do you want to kind of talk us through kind of why do you think that happened? Because um, there was a bit of a, you know, a bit of a drop, wasn't it, considering where you were the previous season? Why do you think that happened? Um, well, I think obviously being a Reading fan is sort of like regularly seen the football that we that we were producing uh it was quite clear to me um obviously we had Stan that was his first season getting to the playoffs which we all thought like blimey what, what's going on but um I think in his second season every, well he bought a new style the first season which is why so many teams sort of struggled to suss him out struggled to cope with with the tactic he was produced uh, he was sort of implementing on the team um, and then the second season obviously apart from the likes of Huddersfield and um, teams that came up from League One everybody was the same everybody knew what tactic he might put out and he just yeah refused to refused to change it so we kind of got found out uh, quite a bit and as you as you can tell as everyone can tell from last season it it didn't play into our favour. Um, as I said, we got we got found out. Stam still sort of refused to refused to change it, and it just, as you say, it went down on a downward spiral from there. Well, that's it. Yeah, I mean, I watched you when you played at our place under Stam in that playoff season, um, and I didn't think you were the most sort of free flowing football team. You weren't like a Brentford, for example. But what you did have was a good resilience. You were well organised. You were well drilled. Um, you saw off our challenge fairly easily. It was only a one nil, but um, it made uh, light last work. Season, last season, when we we played you second game of the season, didn't we? Uh, no, no, the previous season oh. uh, when oh, you the... when you got to the playoffs, um, down St Andrews, you beat a Zola team one nil. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I remember. And you were you were you were a, a you know a dogged resilient team, um, and that's what I, I sort of saw in that team from Reading. They weren't like a free scoring team. Um, but last season, you know, did you lose that sort of rigidness? Did you lose that discipline? Um, did you struggle? To be honest, I don't think... It might come as a bit of a shock that I'm saying this, but I don't think we were that resilient anyway. I don't think we were that sturdy in defence. Okay. I don't think... I don't think we were... I don't think we were as good as people actually thought. We just... Because of the new style, the new manager, everyone... I think, in a way, because of our manager and his playing career, obviously as a as a centre half himself, yeah, every, everyone kind of had that perception of, oh, uh, you know, he, he was one of the world's best centre halves when he was playing. He's going to implement that style into the Reading team and automatically thought that we were going to be so tough to break down. Yeah, and then for that reason, maybe didn't try as much as they 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 could have or should have. I don't think we were. As because we had last season, we had relatively the, the same team, uh, especially defensively. Yeah. And the amount of goals we shipped and the amount of games we lost, like, was ridiculous. I think we had the the season where we got to the playoffs. We had something like the second best home record in in um, in the league. In the league. Yeah. Whereas last, you compare that to last season, it's 
you wouldn't think is this relatively the same team when it was. So I I just think, like I said, teams just were sort of saw the the big name manager, saw who he used to play for, how good he was, what position he played for, and um, didn't maybe that got to other teams a bit and they didn't press us as as much as they should have. Um, which obviously you can't tell now, but maybe that's you know things would have panned out differently if if that could have happened. But yeah, um, part of me does think that we did get lucky that first season um, because obviously you look at the the league positions before Stam came in and and we were a lower well mid to lower league table side. We yeah. weren't anything special, so. Um, I just think we got lucky that season. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, you 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 sacked Stam. Was it uh, end of March time? Sort of mar- end of March. Yeah, um, with six games to go. That's it. Yeah. Um, I don't think you. Were, I don't think anybody saw Reading in major danger of going down. Um, but I could see the fans were getting frustrated. I have a few Reading fans on Twitter. Um, I could see the frustration was growing. But you brought in Paul Clement. Um, tell me a little bit about that one. Um, not like the overly most inspiring managerial appointment um, but you are you happy with that one are you happy for him to take you forward it's hard I'd say most Reading fans would agree with me on this it's very hard to tell at the moment because yeah. on paper you look at the managers and the players he's worked with you know he's been at some Top very manager. very prestigious clubs yeah. like, there's no doubt about that but um, all we have to judge on him so far is what eight games he saved us up with six games to go, he, he yeah, kept us up. He did, yeah. Um, only just, so you have to give him cre- we have to give him credit for that. Okay. But two games into this season, it's very, very hard to judge how this season will pan out. It's because too early, yeah. If we look at, you know, we played two, lost two, but the performances don't reflect the result. Results, we have yeah. actually played a lot better, a lot more attack minded, a lot more direct. And a lot more positively than than we did understand last season. So yeah. I guess it's just trial and error, and just as time goes on, we'll you know we'll see. Obviously, tomorrow's games in the cup. It's you know it's very hard to tell what sort of side we're going to put out. Whether we're going to try and build momentum with our strongest squad, or you know use our youth players and give them a bit more experience. It's very hard to tell at the moment. Yeah. Um, at the moment, I'd say if I have to choose one, I am I am happy with with the appointment. I don't think at the time of hiring him there were many better options yeah. out there. So for for what we had in terms of who we could hire, we did get quite the, a good. The best that was out there. Yeah. Well, yeah. you look at you look at Derby. He was on. I thought he was unfairly sacked. I'm pretty sure they sacked him when he was in the playoffs. Yeah, he was. Or yeah, just wasn't outside. He, yeah. Um, and obviously he kept Swansea up uh, when he was down in Wales. So, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, you you look at his previous record, and you have to applaud him for quite a few things. So hopefully he can replicate what yeah. he did with with Derby. For sure, yeah. It's not uh, a bad track record, is it? Really, you know, and he, all his managerial um, experiences uh, previous. Um, but then heading into this season, I want to you know I want to talk about the start to the season. Um, neither team has made the most explosive start, have they? Um, I know Reading lost two, um, but looking on reflection, uh, you've played Derby at home, who again have spent big this summer, real tough team, and then you went to Nottingham Forest, and again big spenders, a lot of lot of talent in there. I think you've been you know handed a really tough start, and to only lose by one goal each time um, is actually not that bad. I was actually quite impressed. I watched you against Derby. Um, I thought for the first forty-five, for sure, you were the better team. Oh, of course, yeah. Um, you were you were hundred percent on top. You were unlucky to lose that game. I thought massively. That was a sucker punch in the last minute. Um, wasn't deserved. I thought you you know deserved at least a point. Um, so talk to me a little bit about sort of um, what you're expecting from tomorrow night. What what you know what you're hoping for? Is it a confidence builder for you? Are you hoping to give some first team players a go, or is it just a you know a run out for the kids? I'd say because of how we started the season, if, you know, if we had got one win and one loss, or maybe even a draw and a loss, we would have still had that point on the board in the league. Yeah. Um. So we wouldn't have been in the 
worst position. Right now, we are bottom of the league. Although, as you say, only two games played, we are bottom of the league. Yeah. Um, so, if I was Clement, I would not say I wouldn't play some youth players or some fringe players, but the majority of it, the core of the team, um, I would keep relatively similar. Just to, as you said, build confidence, build a bit of, you know, if we do manage to get the win tomorrow, that will give us a bit more momentum. Yeah. Um, like you said, obviously, if we do play off, you know, uh, a first team dominant team, then, you know, it, it, it means that going into the next league game, we are going to be that extra step up in terms of confidence and yeah. in terms of the belief in our own ability and the belief that we can turn things around. That's it, isn't it? It's, you know, cup games can be that, you know, it's. It, it, through, through, I suppose going into this Reading, would they be favourites? Um, maybe being the home team, maybe they have the slight edge. Um, and I know that from a Birmingham perspective, we are more than likely going to rest uh, eight, you know, eight to ten. I would say first team players. We have Swansea at home Friday night. Um, I presume a lot of those are going to be rested. So you know, would you look at Reading as the favourites for this one? Again, it's it's tough to tell because if you're going, obviously, cup games are a bit different because you know it's purely based on one game. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, you know, one game at a time. If you get through, you know, it's the next game. So it's not it's not. I find it hard to base it on league form and go into it thinking about league form. Yeah, for me, it is a bit just a bit like a you know a Champions League final in a way where you just yeah. completely forget. Not that obviously the magnitude, but just in terms of you just forget about the, the league form and yeah. hope that if you do, if your team does pick up the win, then you do get that confidence boost if you need it. Um, I wouldn't say we're favourites, just because we are very similar teams. Like I said yeah, before, we are, yeah. before Stam came in, we weren't the most exciting, we weren't the most attacking, and we weren't the most threatening team in the league like we were until the last time before we did go up we you know we have been a team that has always been at, in the lower half of the table so yeah um whereas obviously you've experienced that yourself with Birmingham like sure, yeah. we're both very similar teams so it's going to be hard to to say who's the favorite maybe maybe we are just because like you said we are at home and we have got that slight advantage of having the home fans but saying that you know it's not the most exciting tie it doesn't matter so, does it yeah the, you know you know cup games are cup games and they're, they're all one in well i think it's going to go to extra time but you know it's all one in 90 minutes you know uh quote um so talk to me a little bit about reddin's team um i know I, I, i'm not going to you know i'm going to be honest with you i don't know lots about you know your transfer business this summer um I know you've brought in one or two experienced players, a few experienced heads in, which is always helpful in the championship. Um, but talk to me, what who who would you you know isolate as your danger men um, going into tomorrow? If you were to you know pick out one or two that you think will start and play and cause us a few problems. Um, judging off the first two games we played, Liam Kelly at the centre of our midfield, he's probably our brightest prospect. Um, had a bit of an off. Off, off patch for quite a large sum of last season. Yeah. Um. I don't think he was at his best, but who who was in our team? Well, yeah, for um, sure, yeah. You know, but this season, yeah. Um. Judging by his performances in the first two games, Liam Kelly's definitely up there. Um. He's very creative. He's very forward thinking. Um. He he has got that ability when he's got you know when he's he, his head's in the game. He has got that ability to just create a spark and create an opening for. Our, our forward players. Yeah. Um, we've got Modu Barrow on on the left wing. He's again. Yeah. He's even last season was our. You know, he was a shining light in a pretty dull team. To be fair, um, he's probably our danger man going forward. Um, our striker is a bit mit- miss a match. Uh, obviously, we've got John Daddy Bovarsin, who is always um, a thorn in our side. I've always noticed. You know. Um, yeah, I mean. Well, he, he scored twice against you. I'm pretty sure. No, scored. Well, he scored he against one. you at your yeah. place last season. He was always doing um, it for Wolves as well with us. So. Yeah, so he he's a danger man, but 
obviously because it's cut, you know, we we brought in Sam Baldock from Brighton and we brought in um, Mark Minolti from Coventry. So they, there's two yeah. strikers that maybe we could we could and should give give a run out to. Um, again, uh, the the only thing that would be interesting, I, I'd say, to look out for as well is Liam Moore. Obviously, he's one of our most one of our more experienced and um, better players, but. You know, I don't know if you've you've been following it, but obviously all the yeah. transfer side with Brighton, I did, whether yeah. he was going to go or not, handed in a transfer request. Um, it'll be interesting to see whether he plays. If he does, then I'd say, in terms of the team, you are in a bit more trouble than than you would have been if he wasn't playing. But I don't know if he will because obviously the way. Not that he handled it badly, but because of what he did. Yeah. I think Clement has gone with the, the the approach of you might be one of our better players, but you need to work your way back into the side and prove that you want to be here. Sure, yeah. Um, so, which is the right thing to do, in my opinion. So, Absolutely, It'll yeah. be interesting to see if he starts. Um, but, yeah, Danger Man, probably Modi Barrow if he starts. And I think Kelly would start because he's probably our main player. Um, I'd find it very sort of. I'll, I'd be surprised if uh, if he was left out tomorrow. So talk to me a little bit about um, Birmingham. I don't know how much you know uh, about the squad currently, the management. Um, but talk to me like what's what's your opinions? What's your opinions down in Reading about Birmingham at the minute? Um, I know we've struggled recently. Um, but what, what's your thoughts on Gary Monk? What's your thoughts on the squad? You know, any players that you would particularly take at Reading? Um, I know a lot about Gary Monk, obviously, his time at Leeds and Middlesbrough, I think it was. Yeah. Um, I think he is a very good manager. Um, my personal, I don't know, obviously, down in Reading, we don't, you know, Birmingham's not really a focal point of, of what we what we speak about. So Of course, yeah. Uh, you know, the opinion on other fans, I, I would have no idea. But my personal views, looking from the outside, and obviously I've seen a, a lot of turmoil within the the hierarchy, um, especially towards the top. Yeah. Um, so I feel I feel a bit sorry for the fans and a bit sorry for, for some of the players and, and people that actually, you know, have had to deal with, deal with the behind the scenes and, and what's gone on. For sure, yeah. Um, in terms of the team, I think, again, I'm not too clued up on the ins and outs of everything, but my personal view is that the team that you have should be doing a little bit better. Yeah, um, I mean, it's always been the case. Like that, we've, we've been saying for the last 12 months, you know, the squad that we've got is is definitely a mid-table team, you know, minimum. Um Definitely underperforming. But no, I think especially under Gary Monk, if you if you manage to keep hold of him, um, and obviously if everything calms down, you know, uh, within the pe- you know the people higher up, wherever wherever the troubles stemming from, um, if that all calms down and Gary Monk, you manage to keep him, keep the squad, maybe add to it in January. Um, you know, I think you would be a bit more of a force than you are. Obviously, you are seen as, you know, the the championship strugglers in a way. Yeah. Nobody really tips you to do anything. A bit like Reading, to be fair. Yeah. Nobody after last season, nobody tips us to do well. Um, pretty much, most people have got us in their bottom four or five, and it's pretty yeah. much similar to to how they view things at Birmingham. So. Yeah. I'd say, from a personal point of view, like I said, like I do feel a bit sorry for for the fans um, from what I from what I've heard and what I know, um, and yeah, you should be doing a, a little bit better at least for for what you have and what you you know the resources and the, and the players you do have at your disposal. Like it's it, you've been dealt a bit of a rough blow, to be fair, but that's that's nothing to do with, in my opinion, nothing to do with the players, nothing to do with the fans. Um, and I think, to be fair, the people higher up don't deserve the support that Birmingham do get because I know through through other fans of yours 
and all the all the other sort of videos that I've seen. Yeah, you do still travel in numbers. You do still get behind everybody that puts on the Birmingham shirt, like. Um, so yeah, like I said, I do feel a bit sorry for you, and I think you should be doing a bit better. Yeah, well, you know, it's the general consensus among the the support. So, um, last few questions. Um, sort of what 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 are you looking for from the season for Reading as a as a whole? You know, what where are you expecting to finish and what you want to see? Um, and what's your predictions ahead of tomorrow night? Score predictions. Um, in terms of where I think we'll finish, what I want us to do, where I think we'll finish, I've said to various people, my friends and other Reading fans, um, between twelfth and fifteenth yeah. um, is where I think we realistically will end up. I don't think we'll be as bad as we were last season, based on the performances. I think we've just, like you said, against Derby, we were very unlucky. Yeah. Um, it's hard to, like I said, it's hard to read two games into the season, and it's hard to judge how you're gonna, how the rest of the campaign is gonna pan out. Um, I just, I just want us to to keep putting the performances in, even if we're not getting the results. The the most you can ask, or the least, sorry, you can you can ask for from your team and your players is just to put put everything into it make sure you're doing your job make sure you're just putting as much effort in as possible yeah. because at the end of the day they are getting paid the money and we are the ones paying the money to go and watch them we're the ones putting our time and finances into into supporting them so For sure, yeah. that's that's the least anybody deserves from their football club so um but in terms of tomorrow score prediction uh it's going to be tight, I think, because yeah. I think we'll both, I think personally we'll both play, because you're in a similar situation to us, I think we'll both play a bit of a mixture. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe you you more so than us, because we have still to get our first, you've got a point, I think. Or Yeah, we drew to Norwich first game of the season, yeah. Yeah, so even though it's not much, you know, you, we're still yet to get a point on the board, so... Um, I think we're mainly going to be filled with first teamers. Mm-hmm. Well, I'd hope so, anyway. Yeah. Um, yeah. Score prediction. Um, it's a tough one to call. Yeah, I'm probably going to go go along the same lines as you and say extra time. I hope not because it just yeah, you know, it's it's not what Long anybody windy. really wants on a Tuesday night. But no. um, I'd probably say after extra time, maybe two one to us. Just because you know you've got to support. You've your, got to back your team, your isn't team you? so, Yeah, for sure. Um, um, yeah, two one, maybe, maybe penalties. You never know. Oh no, I can't be dealing with penalties. We're no good on penalties. Um, I, I saw it going to extra time. I saw a one one in normal time. Um, it's actually been a happy hunting ground for us, really, um, the Medeski. But um, I can see it being a tight game. I don't think either team's going to want to lose this. Um, so I guess we'll see how it goes. Um, thank you anyway, Jake, for your time. No worries. Thanks um, for inviting me on. No, it's all right. Um, and I'll put the link down in the description to your, uh, is it your blog page, um, I believe. Yeah, um, yeah. And I will put your Twitter handle in the description below. Um, so go and check him out, guys. Honestly, some fantastic work. And I believe you're looking for some um, some writers from other pages, aren't you, uh, from other teams? Yeah, from well, basically from the Championship down to the National League, just... Um, writers to yeah just blog for the for the season about their team. I know I have. Um, so I've got lots of other you know friends of different teams. So if uh, if any of you guys want to go and check out his page, honestly, I'm sure you'll be more than welcome to go and uh, write for. It. Do you want to shout the page out um, for me, Jake? Uh, it's just called the Football Opinion at the WordPress dot com um, and at the Football Opinion on Twitter. So okay, yeah, well. Jake, honestly, thank you so much for joining me. Um, no worries, thanks for inviting me on. It's and been good, a pleasure. good luck for tomorrow um, and, and for the rest of the season. You, Appreciate it.